Hello, I'm Michael Mahaffey. I'm the executive director of the Cystasis Foundation here in Portland, Oregon, and I've been asked to give an overview of some of the impacts related to potentially significant changes to Portland's urban planning involving the deregulation of building heights. Uh, in other words, significantly taller buildings, skyscrapers, would be allowed in the city under these changes. First, uh, a bit about cystasis. Uh, we were created as part of the Hurricane Katrina recovery planning in New Orleans uh, to give neighborhoods the tools and the information they needed to be able to plan a more resilient, livable future. We do research, we develop new planning tools, and we investigate particular issues that are of concern to residents, and we advocate uh, where it's appropriate uh, and uh, on particular issues that uh, might be of concern. And one of those has been about the impact of new tall buildings and skyscrapers. Um, and there's a lot of research on that topic and some reasons to be quite concerned about the wave of global real estate development that is changing the character of many cities around the world, uh, and that includes uh, many new tall buildings. A few years ago, we were asked by a group in Paris, France, called SOS Paris, to conduct a fact-finding tour looking into that city's plans to build a number of new tall buildings within the historic core of the city. We found many troubling impacts from these proposed structures and many claims that their proponents made that were simply not supported by the research evidence uh, or the evidence we gathered during the trip. Now it seems that there are some plans to raise building heights here in our own hometown of Portland uh, as part of the new West Quadrant Plan, the comprehensive planning for the city. And in fact, many of the same issues have arisen again here. Uh, so this time, I speak both as a researcher uh, for Cystasis Foundation and as a resident and a stakeholder. I'm a resident of Goose Hollow and a member of the Goose Hollow Foothills League. So in both of those capacities, I'd like to share uh, some of the concerns I have about the new proposal. I'd like to say, first of all, that some of my good friends and colleagues uh, have been part of the West Quadrant planning process, and nothing I say is meant to impugn their hard work uh, or others' hard work throughout this process, nor do I want to malign those who need to make a living in architecture and urban development, as I do myself. At the same time, we do rely on a system of checks and balances to challenge one another and to keep ourselves accountable to larger civic goals and to the public. So in that spirit, I'm afraid I have to conclude that there have been some serious flaws in the West Quadrant planning in both process and content. For a number of reasons, the selection of stakeholder representatives was skewed to the developer and architect community, uh, which I also represent, but that imbalance certainly raises fundamental questions about the fairness and the integrity of the process to date. It's also my conclusion that on the specific issue of building heights and the allocations that the plan makes, uh, there have been some rationales for deregulation that have been accepted without question. And I do think it's in the public interest that these rationales be examined more carefully uh, in light of the actual research evidence. One of the most troublesome is the argument that tall buildings will promote more sustainable development, a proposition that is simply not supported by the research evidence. And in fact, we have on our website, and you're welcome to have a look at that, uh, research evidence that points in the opposite direction. Other issues of content that I suggest have not yet been properly addressed in the plan include impacts on neighborhood and city livability, uh, such as shading, wind, views, and effects on the public realm, increasing incentives for historic demolition, uh, and economic impacts on the city of a kind of supply side approach to economic development. We will encourage some expensive new towers and expensive uh, buyers to come in and that will trickle down to the rest of us. Regarding the latter, some of my own research for the Urban Land Institute has documented how global capital is rushing into real estate markets today uh, and changing the character of many cities around the globe, uh, often with profound impacts on livability. So this is something I think we have to be aware of and be, uh, be uh, sensitive to, be concerned about. 
If Portland wants to maintain its prime asset as a livable human scale city and its global leadership as such, then I suggest we will need much more effective protections of this livable heritage. And I'm afraid the plan moves very much in the wrong direction in that regard. There is a growing opposition to the height deregulations that the plan proposes, and I think that's very understandable. I think it's unfortunate, however, that these voices have been dismissed as NIMBYs, when it seems to me many of these folks are genuinely concerned about the larger civic question of what kind of city we will become uh, and for whom, and who will decide that. Nor are these folks all non-experts. I myself am an urban planner, an urban designer, and an adjunct instructor or professor in architecture and urban planning in five graduate programs in four countries, and I'm on the editorial boards of two international research journals, as well as currently a part-time member of the architecture faculty at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, where I am a researcher in topics of sustainable urban development, including climate change and urban form. Uh, our colleague Patrick Condon, who's a professor at the University of British Columbia uh, and a resident of Vancouver, has also uh, sent a letter uh, that is available also on our website uh, that speaks to some of the cautionary lessons from that city, uh, which is often held in high regard by uh, planners here. Uh, so I think we do need to take those lessons to heart. As I said, I think there is abundant evidence in the research to point out serious concerns with tall buildings and serious flaws in the way the current plan marches forward to implementation without uh, a full consideration of these issues. It does seem that at this point, Portland's future has been decided on the basis of a preordained, exuberant vision by a small group of people, many of whom have an understandable vested interest in executing that vision, and the stakeholder involvement process has been used to essentially rubber stamp that vision without a full and careful deliberation on the basis of independent evidence. So I think it's urgent that concerned citizens speak out for the livable heritage of the city and its neighborhoods and speak out for a more careful examination of these issues with regard to the West Quadrant plan specifically, and I would urge those of you watching to do so. Thank you.